hey guys and welcome back to another video and i hope you are all okay on that side of the screen now today i've got here with me the early 2015 retina macbook pro 13 inch base model hope that you enjoy the video and hopefully you will enjoy my approach to it so my name is roberto george and i'll see you soon So as usual, let's start by taking a quick look at the packaging itself. And in here, as you can see, there are no changes from the previous model. Spec-wise, this is the 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina display with the base configuration, which comes with the Broadwell i5 2.7, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigs of flash storage. And now as promised, let's go for the quick unboxing. And as you can see, just peel that plastic off and there you go unboxing done as fast as i can and as usual at the top we will find our macbook pro which we will take out of the scene just for a few seconds we will also find the, as usual all that documentation the stickers and of course that cloth to clean our retina display also included comes the MagSafe 2 power adapter and in my particular case as you can see the extension cable which in this case has the European socket which will be the one that I'll be using. And now let's take that protective plastic envelope from the MacBook Pro and I'm gonna let you listen to the sound which is always a great sensation. And there you go. I really hope that you enjoyed that sound. In my particular case, I know I did. And now we can lift the display of the MacBook Pro. Regarding the external of this computer, there are no physical changes from the exception of the new trackpad, which by now you already know, but we will take a closer look in just a few moments. And now let's take that protective cover from the keyboard so we can start using this machine. But before we do, let's just take a quick look at the ports that we have. So on the left side, we still have that MagSafe 2 connection, 2 Thunderbolt 2, 1 USB 3.0, that audio output jack, and those dual microphone inputs. While on the right side, we still have that SD card slot, HDMI, and USB 3.0. Regarding the trackpad, which is the only external change, it's not something that you can see with your eyes, it's something that you can feel. So I'm going to try my best to explain what I feel here in just a brief moment. But before we do, let's turn on the machine so we can start using it instead of talking about it. And as usual, once you turn the machine on for the first time, you will be faced with that OS 10 setup guide, which once you fill it in, you will be ready on your desktop so you can enjoy your machine. So before we move on, let's take a look at the trackpad. And this is something that it's really difficult to explain on screen. The best thing is just to experience it, but I will do my best. And to be honest, while watching the keynotes, I was a bit excited to know that there was a new implementation on the trackpad. But at the same time, I was a bit worried if I would like the experience or not. And to be honest, I really do. Regarding the feeling, you will feel the trackpad much more sturdy instead of that loose that we had on previous models. Besides the new pressure sensors, you still have that click sensation. Although it's not a mechanical click, it does feel real. And because this is not a mechanical click, once you turn the machine off, you will not feel it. But if the machine is off, then most definitely we will not need it anyway. And so far, by the experience that I had, especially on browsing pages and applying pressure to preview pages, as you saw in the video before, this really brings nice features to the table. And one of the great things is that you can customize the way that you want to use this trackpad in a old fashioned or a more modern way. So what I can say by now is that I'm really happy so far with the usage of this new trackpad. And now let's take a look at some benchmarks and in here we can see a great improvement, especially on the reads. On the writes we were getting about 600-650 megs and on the reads the average was 1300. But as you could see on screen I did have some peaks on 1450, 1425 and so here we can see a great improvement on the SSD. Which by the way, just for curiosity, the model installed on my machine is the Samsung SSD as you can see on screen. And on Geekbench 3, we got a score of roughly 3,300 on a single core score and a multi core score of 7,050, which is for this machine a great score. We also used Cinebench R15 so we could test out the new Intel Edish 6100 and the new Broadwell CPU. And as you can see on screen regarding these scores, we got a roughly 29 frames per second on the GPU and 318 on the CPU. 
I also installed Windows 8 under Bootcamp and although on my particular case in this machine I will not be using Windows for the sake of science and sharing with you guys, here it is Unigin Valley running on this machine under Windows 8 on Bootcamp. And as you can see by now on screen, we got an overall score of roughly 500 and a 12 frames per second average. So in my opinion, this is not a gaming machine and I will not be using for games. But for those that want to play some light gaming, I think you will be all right. I also tested out under the latest version of Furmark and in here we got an overall score of 622 as you can see on screen. And also I wanted to try on 3D Mark Tool, but I wasn't able to install it. I was getting errors on the installation. So at this moment, I'm sorry, but I cannot show you any 3D Mark results. And even before we wrap up this review, let's take a look at this machine behaves when we boot it up and in here we are booting on OS 10. I'm not counting the seconds for me it's quick enough but if you want to check how much time it takes just go to the video time code and you will be able to tell but right now we are on the desktop ready to work. And now let's do the same test but instead of booting up into OS 10 we are going to boot into Windows 8 under bootcamp installation. Now this is something as I mentioned before that I will not be using in this particular machine. I only need OS 10 on this one and once again I didn't check out how much time it took but if you are into that just go once again to the video time code and you will be able to tell. Now we are on the desktop and once again ready to work. And that will be it for this video. So we have reached the end of this overview. Hope that you enjoyed my approach. And I would like to share with you also that this machine will not replace any of the machines that I'm using at the moment. This will only be a machine that will add to my mobility needs. So for that, I do feel that I made a great purchase for my needs. And although this machine will not be my main machine to work with, especially on intensive tasks, I will, as usual, perform a video series about it. And this time we'll be using real world performance. And here I'm talking about especially After Effects, Apple Motion 5, Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. So this will be a video series that you can expect in the future to see here. And if you are expecting for that, just stay tuned to the channel. Hope that you enjoyed the video once again. My name is Roberto George and I'll see you on the next one.